Um, so, so I think you know, one of the core things for us at Justia, and I think with Law.gov as well, is that you know, it's not just getting the information out there just to get information up. I mean, we want to get it out there so people can see what the government's doing, can sort of see how the government operates, and really start participating on, you know, with the government, both on either sort of uh, new legislation that's taking place, which I think uh, the government's done a pretty good job on, but also, you know, how past decisions have been made or sort of what rules were looked at to make decisions, especially in things like court cases, which is, you know, one of the, one of the segments of information that we're looking at uh, uh, getting online for free. Um, you know, I sort of break down what we do. You know, we do a lot of aggregation of stuff. I mean, it's not our real revenue part of our business, but we are trying to build up a lot of free information, both here in the United States and, and abroad, and in, in, uh, you know, Mexico, uh, Central and South America as well. Uh, and th there's a lot of sort of different steps that we have to look at in terms of trying to get this information and you know, putting up and, and of course, uh, sharing it with others. Uh, the, the, the first sort of big thing that we always face. Uh, is, is the information even available electronically? I mean, that's like the, the biggest item. And there's lots of, lots of things you'll find that aren't available. Um, for example, the, the U.S. Supreme Court briefs, you can't get online right now uh, or get them all uh, available. Every once in a while, the ABA will get some. Um, back in the day when, you know, when, when Mike and I used to work at Fine Law, we, had, we hired someone to actually go down to the court and uh, make copies of those, and we put them online. Uh, they're no longer doing that now. Um, but, you know, we'd like to see some of that information up. Things like the California Code. Uh, you know, Rob's done a great job with the Oregon laws, but as he pointed out, you know, he'd like to do California as well, but California doesn't even have the headings on the section numbers of the California Code that you see online. Or they're missing certain sections, like the building codes just don't show up. I mean, you know, you, you feel like you're searching a complete set, but then you aren't. Although sometimes they'll, they'll tend to put that back up later. Uh, Different things like just getting the official text of the opinions of the Court of Appeals decisions. I mean, if we could just get the actual final text of these, these sort of very high-level decisions, that would be great. I mean, forget about the citations and all the page numbering. Just the final version of the text, which is, again, something that we can't get right now and which is, you know, I think Ed spends quite a bit of time making sure is, is right on fast case uh, is, uh, you know, for the bar associations as well as uh, PLOL, uh, his, uh, his free resource that he has at fast case. Um, and then, then some separate sort of secondary items, which will periodically show up, uh, but things like, you know, the co Congressional Research uh, Service Reports, um, which the government pays for, puts online, and that, you know, like other government documents, information that, that appear every once in a while, you have to wait for WikiLeaks to put up, and someone puts that up, and then you can get them that way. But ideally, the government would put that, but, you know, put that information up itself. Great secondary uh, materials of, of very high-value research, um, which, the, you know, we're paying for as taxpayers, the marginal cost of putting up electronic copy when it's already an electronic version, you know, zero. Uh, the, the second item I would say is, is the, the copyright item. Uh, copyright and sort of different legal issues, licensing issues. You know, one thing I think you know, we faced, uh, again, I'm going back w w with, with Rob's stuff in Oregon, is that some states are claiming copyright to their codes or their, uh, or their uh, revised statutes, uh, saying it's not the same as session laws, and, you know, understand the difference there. But even just, even if that copyright's not going to be enforced in a court, it still puts a sort of, you know, entry-level barrier of entry, because a lot of people are just afraid to go ahead and grab it or to challenge uh, uh, the state, like uh, uh, Carl did uh, uh, up in Oregon. Uh, so, that's, so that's one issue, and that's really sort of a state-based uh, type of thing. Uh, the second one is sort of licensing restrictions that are placed. A lot of uh, states will have free information online, but they'll partner with a private publisher like Lexis. Uh, and you'll see the California cases will be up online since the 1850s, but there's really a licensing agreement for you to actually use them, and you're not allowed to republish them in, in different items like that. So that, that's sort of a, a secondary restriction that, that we face. Uh, uh, different items which is you know, slightly different, is there's some private groups such as building codes that are claiming copyright on codes that they're actually pushing the states to adopt or pushing different municipalities to adopt, and yet they're, do, they're, they're sort of trying to get this, you know, it's certainly helpful to get these codes in place, but they're also doing it as a way to produce revenue. They know once they get it into a state or once they get it into a municipality, they also have a brand new revenue source of all the contractors and all the uh, developers out there that need to uh, get a hold of these codes. And then the sort of side issues, which is, you know, periodically pops up, are things like legal briefs or legal contracts. So, you know, legal briefs, you'll see uh, some lawyers now claiming copyright on the briefs that they're filing with the courts. And, again, it's 
sort of a up in the air issue, and some of them were just actually upset that West and Lexus are selling these briefs, which is probably one of the things that's driving them on it. But there's also you know question of, you know who owns that copyright on those materials or you know just attachments to certain uh, filings. For example, the first Superman uh, comic was is actually an attachment to a filing in a case in the federal district courts. So I mean, that's there's obviously a, a copyright in the, the Superman comic, or you know this, you could do the same thing. You could put the whole Harry Potter series right and make an attachment. Is it you know, then part of a legal proceeding, or is there a copyright in it? And then things like contracts and like SEC documents, you often will see uh, major contracts filed there, which uh, some of the companies or corporations have claimed copyright on, even though it's part of an official government filing. Uh, and then, then sort so of stepping back, so, you know, can we get it? Can we get through the legal restrictions? Then we sort of come to the, the technical issues in terms of grabbing stuff, the, you know, the XML bulk downloads, and that's really a, sort of a, a third type of issue. Um, Probably, you know, the first one there to me is can we actually crawl it and get it? Uh, there's, you know, a lot of times they'll be up there, but it'd be very hard to crawl. Uh, for example, New York uh, State Code. You want to get the New York State Code, they have a little JavaScript. Uh, it'll, it'll stop every once in a while. They'll lock out your IP address. Look, we can figure out how to get it. That's not that hard to do. But it, it is an additional uh, barrier of actually getting this. It'd be nicer if they just put up a large XML file and say, hey, it's going to be up there for free. I mean, granted, we're, we're going to get it, and we're going to put it up as a big file. They could just do that ahead of time. There's no reason not to. Uh, things like uh, uh, just getting the Pacer stuff. It'd be obviously nice if Pacer was consistent among the courts. It'd also be nice when the Pacer updates a court, uh, individual court, that they actually tell you they're updating it and that the documentation actually matches which is up there. So it's just trying to get some systems in place, which is much, much harder to do when you're running, you know, 98 different district courts and a bunch of bankruptcy courts and sort of standardizing on, on a core system for all the courts. And I think that, uh, you know, as Stephen mentioned, we'd, we'd be much better off, uh, well, the, I think that both the courts and, and the people would be better off if they sort of pulled the resources together and really tried to work on standardizing the, the overall PACER system, the overall court filing system. Uh, but it is, it is an issue. We spend at least one person uh, day a week just fixing PACER scripts that have been changed by different courts. And we have to triple check the data because we can't trust the sort of what we're told that, that, that's coming in place. It's, it doesn't always match up in order to bring it into our system. And I know we've had some issues with the recap where we put in bad information before because we weren't quite checking stuff enough. But we've you know, obviously been spending a lot of time uh, putting those things in, in place. Um, and then, to again, you know, a, 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 a sort of a separate uh, item is obviously if we can get the, the, the documents down, can we get them in a nice format that we can sort of scan and get them uh, uh, nicely marked up and sort of clickable in, in a way. So we can sort of you know, click and sort of link between documents. That's sort of always a nice thing. Um, and then, you know, given all that, I, I think one of the, the stuff, one of the items that we're really working on at, at Justia as well as uh, with, with Stanford and the ABA and a bunch of other folks is trying to allow different uh, uh, third parties start annotating this. So whether it's students uh, in classes or whether it's bloggers uh, wanting to sort of use cases to link to them. Uh, and again, this is this I think is relatively important because you've got a lot of people that will produce a lot of really good secondary materials if they can have access to the primary materials. And I know a lot of people say, well, the primary materials are here, the secondary materials they could still use. But, but you see situations where this doesn't happen. And again, there was a blogger uh, recently who had access to some cases, and those cases was, were withdrawn from him from his use, and he actually took down his whole blog. It was a, it was a relatively high-ranked blog by the ABA. So there are certain things where if we can actually work together to make these things available to people, they will build on top of it. And I, I think we see you know, the engineering and the, the sort of the tech folks here uh, from, you know, Gov Pulse and Rob and, and, and the folks down in the government, there's a lot of people that will work hard on this, but we need to get just sort of that baseline uh, set of materials so they can so they can sort of use that and sort of make that, that part go. And, and the, the final thing I'll quickly mention is I do, I do think there are certain privacy issues, especially when it comes to cases and briefs. And one thing is I don't think the courts can just push it onto lawyers uh, because this has been uh, mentioned a few times in these seminars. Uh, a lot of the people filing these briefs are individuals. They aren't lawyers. And they're going to put in their social security number, and they're going to put in their driver's license number, and they don't know any better. And so just punishing lawyers and saying it's your issue is not going to solve most of the, most of the situations. Uh, but more importantly, cases and lawsuits and uh, briefs, they, they're, they're really sort of stories. And, and they're, they're, they're very much about people, about situations, and, you know, 
you'll see court cases citing briefs, you know, assuming these facts are true, but then people think those facts are true, but it's really just for a point of law. And I think as these things get indexed by Google especially, what you're finding is that a lot of people aren't even searching for legal materials or information. They're just searching someone's name. And the only thing that shows up for that person's name is this particular story which may or may not be true as part of a lawsuit. And so that's something I think we need to think about going forward. I mean, there's, you want to do certain things and make it open for everybody. But there, there are other places where people don't have, you know, 100 pages about them like Carl does, uh, or a million pages uh, on Google. So something mentioned, you know, one more thing mentioned about Carl and a lawsuit, no, no big deal. But uh, uh, it, it's, for a lot of these individuals, this is all that people know about them. This is it. So that's just something I think we need to think about uh, going forward as a group. Thanks.